Why does the game always start me off at the start of the world map when I load it up? So now we finally get to see what the fabulous foursome are capable of. From here on out, there's usually about one every stage. All you have to do is touch them, and you're free to use them whenever you like. Demetria here is, I want to say arguably the most useless one. She stuns everyone in the immediate area for some time, but it doesn't always seem to work on everyone. It creates a bit of an opening, but honestly, it's nothing the other members of the Fab Four can't do better. I could just waltz up and go catch the girl, but I think I ought to fight people every now and then, or otherwise Evil Lord 30 is going to get real boring real fast. Thankfully, there's a new member of the FF here, and he's my second favorite to use. His power is that he shoots a direct line of icicles that wipes out anything along the way. Pretty much a one-hit kill against most enemies. Real handy for clearing out a path through a lot of units. Fucking chasing ward, whatever.
so we're about halfway into Evil Lord 30, and the game is still throwing levels at us that only have one enemy type. The pacing is really off here. There's no challenge. But then again, that really could be said about most of the mode to begin with. Even if there were different enemy types, they gave us use of the Icicle Beam in an incredibly narrow stage, so it's kind of hard to not kill a ton of people with it. Alright, so here's a third of the Fab Four, Aiden. I'm kind of really on the fence about this guy, I'll spoil it now. We haven't seen the Mechani of Winds yet, but the Mechani of Winds is my favorite one to use. Aiden here is basically the exact same thing as him, but not as well. So, although yes, he is useful, he's pretty much outclassed. His attack is just an area of effect which knocks enemies away from you if it doesn't kill them outright. Good for making some room around you, I guess. They are really stretching out this side quest, aren't they? This is the third stage in a row we're chasing this particular girl, not even counting the one where we chased her sister. Thankfully, this is the last time we have to catch her, and we've got some real battles coming up afterwards.
Demetria is basically there as a trap. If you try to go for a raid off the bat, you're going to get rocked by the enemy shooters. The safest way to go about doing this stage quickly is to plow on through the Nimbles and carefully fight your way back east. This lets you take care of each type of unit one at a time, so you don't have to worry about, say, summoning Nimbles to beat the shooters, only to have them die to the brutes. This stage can be kind of tough, but that's what I like to see from this mode. It's possible to brute force it, but there's just so many shooters and nimbles near the center that you're just going to get pinballed around everywhere if you try. The nimbles are your top priority. Shooters don't move around so much, so if you can just clear a path through the nimbles, then you're pretty much golden. Though you should take out some of the shooters every now and then to keep the pressure off your brutes. I guess I'm really just glad this mode doesn't try to follow any real semblance of resource management. Sure, there's the gold for rewinding time, but if summoning units costed something, then this mode would get too complicated for its own good. Getting too close to this guy will have him spam fireballs at you, so easiest way to beat him is to just to summon units and send them charging at him. Incredibly simple, and I could have beaten the stage without even moving to begin with.
And that, my friends, is the story of how Evil Lord saved Christmas.